Anto, is is that is that a correct pronunciation? We want to get your name right. We're Anto. really bad at that. Anto. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. That is definitely not our strong <laughs> when it comes well, to. Well, yeah, we I know. We I have family in the U.S. That. So, <laughs> oh man, but where whereabouts in the U.S.? Uh, Ch- Chicago and Los Angeles. Nice. Oh, very I come cool. to Los Angeles so often. So <laughs> I know uh, what my name is actually Antonello, which is very long. So I say Anto. Everybody knows I'm um, Anto, which is very, very easy. <laughs> so <laughs> a little less syllables or uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All that <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. That's a good segue into our conversation with Anto or Antonello from the Italian metal band Reality Gray. Welcome, man, to uh, what we call Howl at the Moon, uh, a brutal podcast offset. You know, we're, we're super stoked to have you here, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, it, it's a pleasure, and um, I'm pretty stoked to be talking with you guys. So thank you. <laughs> we're stoked as well. So Pleasure's all on our side, so thank you seriously for doing this. And uh, yeah. again, like you're coming all the way from South Italy, so uh, yeah, thank that's you. awesome in its own regard. No problem. <laughs> what whereabouts in in South Italy are you currently at? Uh, actually, the southern uh, southern eastern tip of Italy. It's called Puglia. It's a very nice region. And it's kind of uh, becoming the new uh, uh, tourist uh, place to be. <laughs> okay. So everything is getting exp- expensive, you know, expensive. <laughs> uh, big stars come here, like Bon Jovi, freaking Madonna. Not oh, joking. Man. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's even awesome. President Trump. Even pre- President Trump came like, like two years ago, and they 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 rented a whole. Um, a beach, uh, you know. <laughs> I don't that think was... he needs a tan at all. I'll no. say that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> that that's awesome, man. I mean, it sounds sounds beautiful, and you know, hope, hopefully one day we we always talk about any of the 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 bands that we talk with overseas would would love to actually get out there and and converse in real life. But this is the next best thing, so can't complain. Technology makes it easier to stay connected well you guys are welcome you guys are welcome as soon oh, as we, this and then we want to travel uh there was another band we interviewed uh n have you ever heard of them they're from malta the band no n. no uh I'm not familiar that's like the closest one i can think of to, <laughs> to italy because I, I know malta's <laughs> in the mediterranean but uh yeah they were they were you know you know gracious enough for us to feature them but uh it's they said the same thing. They're like, come over, come over when you can and come visit. We're like, we want to so badly. Well, you guys, as I said, uh, we have a lot of uh, people come from, from the U.S. Uh, here right right now. So, oh, cool. yeah, apparently you guys can enter the, the, the European Union. So I don't know if it's the smartest thing to do right now, but uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe as soon as this pandemic ends, you guys are welcome. Come anytime. Well, we need to come when y'all are playing on stage. That's what we yeah. need to do. <laughs> Don't tempt us with a good time. We hope it's going to be soon because uh, here people are starving for concerts. And uh, it's, it's, it's not very, very bright right now. <laughs> can, can y'all play any shows right now? Uh, you know, what's the, the state of music right now in Italy? Can, can you tour? Can well, you? Um, no tours are, are getting booked right now. We can play at uh, the local level, but the thing is that um, all the um, the venues here, uh, we, we here in Bali we had we had like maybe five venues for uh, metal and rock concerts, and, and they uh, not active anymore apart from two. One, it's a huge one with for UG bands, like big bands. And uh, we played there several times. And uh, the other one is a new venue, but we played, we actually were uh, lucky enough to play last year in September. And uh, before, because that was uh, for the, as 
uh, same as this year, in summertime, they tend to open things. And then in October, they close everything down again. So we were lucky to to play in September at this new venue. It was super awesome. It was sold out show. And, okay. um, but they wanted us to play again in now in July. But the um, thing is that it's too hot. It's too hot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they have no air conditioning, you know. That's it's, brutal in itself. It's too hot. I mean, it, with all the masks, you know, people with the masks, it, it's a problem. So we said, look, maybe it's it's better if we can, you know, play in 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 fall in fall in the, in the winter. Uh, so this is where we at right now. It's not very uh, easy <laughs> with shows, but uh, that's how it is. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh... Tell us a little bit about the Italian music scene there. What what sort of, uh, and trailing off of that, what sort of got you into metal, you know, growing up? What was like the first band that made you pick up a guitar? Okay, so um, my parents and my grandfather uh, had a um, record shop. Oh, uh, which, nice. that's yeah. Uh, yeah, my, my, my father actually is uh, one of the biggest rolling stone fan <laughs> you know <laughs> so i was uh, at this rock music in my my year uh, since i was a, since i was a child but i was ne- not interested at all <laughs> in music no, not at all wow no but uh you know when I, I remember when i was a child i was in the record shop and i was like i gravitated to this the heavy metal section which would you know the, all this weird and scary covers i remember you know going through this um, records. I clearly remember I remade a uh, Can I Play with Madness single, you know, the, the you know, the Eddie space where the, the punch that smashes through. And uh, Master of Puppets from Metallic, I remember that it was scary. Classic. For me, it was, was scary. And I mm-hmm. remember the uh, original cover for Appetite for Destruction for Guns N' Roses, which oh, yeah. we had, which not, not the, cro- with the, the cross and the faces, but the actual one. That was uh, like um, uh, there was this robot in, in a in a dark alley with this. They was like raping so this woman or something. It was kind of weird. I don't know if oh, you guys yeah. know that. I don't think we did not, not know the, that. Yeah, not to my knowledge. Okay, that 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 cover was censored, actually, and we got the the, the cover we everybody knows with the cross with the faces, but the original was that one. Go look it up. <laughs> You're gonna make us and do a Google added. search here in a minute. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was, you know, my first, uh, you know, uh, contact with uh, metal music. But I was not listening at all because my father didn't want me to, to listen to any of that stuff. <laughs> Classic. But yeah, but uh, it was not like you don't. It just, uh, you know. 70s music, it's better, you know, the boomer <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, he likes metal. So, so uh, when I was like maybe 14 or, yeah, I was 14, um, this friend of mine got this, ah, I got this, uh, you know, this music here, Megabed. You know them? Uh, no. <laughs> I got this other one, Slayer. Um, I said, okay, let me let me listen. And I got like, Blown away completely. Uh, was Countdown to Extinction and Slayer was um, Divine Intervention, which is not their best album, but I, li- I love it because, you know, nostalgia or whatever. So okay. from that, I went from there. And I, you know, soon I was like, man, I need to play guitar. I, mean, I want to be like a guitar player. But it was like, you know, something would never happen. <laughs> I remember I was, you know, the, the classic. Uh, tennis racket. Uh, oh, just like you know, air guitar, kind of. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I was playing tennis racket, and uh, so that was. Uh, and then you know, I went to Iron Maiden and Metallica. You know, and then from there, I went to death metal, Pantera, death metal, and so on. So I never stopped. <laughs> so that was well, my. Uh, we're glad you didn't, because uh, yeah. now we now we have Reality Gray out of that. Uh, t- <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about the band. Uh, you know what sort of sound y'all are going for, and like you know what what's influencing uh, what we're hearing. 
Well, this is a very hard question for me because um, we try not to be pigeonholed in this um, in any of the uh, so-called genres in metal because uh, you know we all we started when we started we uh, loved to do this uh, melodic death metal that was so popular at the time and um, but that got very very saturated very fast so we don't want to be uh, pigeonhole in that genre, but still people do. I don't know why, because if you listen to our, uh, especially the new album, we cannot be, uh, you know, pigeonhole in that genre, and that's it. Um, I think it's something like I don't know. I would say we are metal, but uh, <laughs> that's too too. You know. I think that's fair. <laughs> that's... Yeah, that that's the best way to put it. We have we have different, um, uh, you know influences like hardcore, uh, death metal, and uh, brutal, you know, brutal death metal, uh, progressive music, the new progressive called Gent, you know, the, the thing that genre comes mm-hmm. from uh, Meshuga, so periphery, and, uh, and in guitar solos, we try to put like fusion stuff. Uh, so we try to be as much as original as we can. And some thing. people catch that, some people don't. So <laughs> this is uh, the best way. Uh, I would say total metal, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it just came up with, with that term. I don't know. <laughs> well, we're going to create a new genre now called total yeah, metal. Total metal. <laughs> people are just have to deal with it. Guess yeah, we tried to put, yeah, we tried to put as, as well clean vocals, and but not every time. Yeah. You know, uh, because they, we don't want to be like, uh, oh, that's a metalcore band, which we, we like metalcore, but we're not a metalcore band. But as soon as you put clean vocals in a you know, brutal song, okay, you're metalcore. <laughs> All the time. I don't get it. But yeah, so it's very difficult for me to, to say what genres we do, uh, you know, we play. But, um, uh, our influences changed over the, the years. As I said, we started to listen to... We still do, but we were influenced like Soy War, In Flames, uh, Children of Bo at the Gates. But then we uh, started to put like, um, you know, more progressive things. Um, and then like metalcore and hardcore was a huge influence for us since the beginning. And then maybe that, that side came up, you know, came to the surface more um, with the last record before before being described was different redemption that that record from 2014 is way more to the hardcore and metal core so to speak so this one is more progressive and so we we like we like to do things very differently with songs and albums and try to experiment as much as we can so can you talk to us a little bit so like what i'll backtrack here i always do this i get ahead of myself you had mentioned uh, Children of Bodom and like In Flames and stuff like that. And when I was listening to the new album today, Todd and I were kind of texting back and forth as we were like binging the whole Reality Grey discography. And uh, I, I definitely got a lot of Children of Bodom vibes from uh, oh, it's Preachers, Preachers of Hatred. And I, just like the vocal styling and the guitar solos. And I'm a huge like uh, Children of Bodom fan, Alexi Leho. R.I.P. He was one of my favorite guitarists growing up. And, and when I saw that you were playing like the Randy Rhodes Jacksons, I was really excited because like I really wanted an Alexi Leho signature ESP and it's the same cut and everything. Um, but what I'm getting at before we get into like your, your gear, because I definitely want to get into that as well. You guys have three feature lengths, including the new one um, beneath this crown. But your first one, Darkest Days Are Yet to Come, came out in 2006, and then Define Redemption was in 2014. Out of curiosity, in a day and age where every band is just pumping out either singles, EPs, or albums, you guys have such a long stint in between each album cycle. Is there like a method to the madness, or is it just one of those, if it feels right, like we're going to do it, kind of organicness to it? Yeah, well, actually, we don't think about these things. <laughs> we should. Which is great. <laughs> um, but we don't. Uh, 
actually um, in between um, Define Redemption and uh, Darkest Days, in 2008, we put out uh, an EP called Day Zero. So that was, but still, from 2008 and 2014, it's a very long time. But what happened was that uh, we were, with Day Zero, we got to, we got to tour a lot. Um, we did tour with D-Side, uh, 8 Sphere, uh, nice. we did a bunch of tours. Then what happened, that our drummer left. So, uh, you know, when you, you lose a drummer, it's kind of a um, kind of pain in the ass because it's way, way, way harder to find a drummer than anybody else. Definitely. Then, uh, yeah. So, uh, also, um, I went to, I, I came to the U.S. for two years to, uh, for study reasons. I, I oh, studied cool. like, uh, I'm a pilot as well. I don't practice pilot, but. Oh, no shit. <laughs> Yeah, Florida. I went to Florida. Uh, so I stayed for two years. Then when I came back, uh, the, the, the band was, uh, I want to say, in a hiatus for a year and a half. So when I came back, I had to rebuild the, the band, so to speak. So we had a new guitar player and a new drummer. That took a, bit, a little bit of time because we had to you know, incorporate these new uh, band members. So that was like 2011. So it was like up to uh, Define Redemption of 2014, it was like three years, which is not that long. But of course, if you take it into the account of everything, it's a way longer <laughs> time frame. At this, this time, I mean, you, you say, okay, 2014, 2021, it's even longer period of time because we lost three uh, drummers. <laughs> Three, Three drummers. Yeah. Oh my uh, goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we had to, you know, cope with this, and you start to do uh, music, and then you had to bring this new people in, and they want to, of course, they want to have, you know, uh, their style, and so it, it took time, but uh, we actually started to pre-production for. Um, this new album uh, in 2016, so after two years. Wow. Uh, so it took a long time. We had this album sitting there for uh, almost a year and a half because of the pandemic and you know we didn't know what to do. But still, it, it's something we don't, um, we don't think, uh, but we are perfectly aware that we took, <laughs> we take too much time even if we're fast to, uh, you know, do songs and, you know, uh, but uh, in, in fact, we are already making the new album. <laughs> we're, we're recording as, because you, we don't want to lose time. A little bit there. Because yeah. people forget, people forget very, very easily. If you, if you don't put, like you said, if you don't put a single an album every year, it's very, very hard to, um, you know, stay on, you know, on top of things. So. Talk a little bit about uh, Beneath This Crown. Like, what are your thoughts on now? It's finally out there. You know, especially just talking after how long you sat on it. And now you, you can finally put it out to the public. It's out there now. Uh, what's the reception like? How's that been? And, and what are your thoughts on finally getting it out? Well, of course, getting, getting the, the album out was uh, yeah, like stay free. Because we were, we were like, man, we, we, what are we gonna do with this album? Nobody wants to sign us, you know. Be, okay, some people wanted to sign us, but we're like total rip off <laughs> mm -hmm. deals. So we said yeah. no. So we waited and we waited and we waited, and finally we had this uh, with the help of the, our management. We were uh, able to get in touch with Nuclear Blast guys, and they said, guys, you the, the album is. Totally cool. Uh, do you want to do uh, Blood Blast, which is a subsidiary for Nuclear Blast? And we said, hell yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah, I mean, Nuclear Blast yeah. tells you something. You say yeah. yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, that was that was uh, one of our dream since we started. So, you know, so they helped us a, a lot with, with uh, you know, the release. And uh, it was very, 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 uh, we're pretty stoked about the reception of the album. Not that the other album were, um, you know, not receiving well, it was very well received, but this time was different. 
um, for a number of reasons. We got like a lot of uh, top album or 10, 10, 9, 10, which is, oh, I, I don't know, to us never happened. You know, it happened sporadically, but not, you know, eight, time, eight, eight times on 10 out of 10. I mean, that was totally, totally out of this world for us. And then we got attention for like a metal injection, Bakken radio. I wanted to put our songs on their radio. Uh, I got interviewed by Gear Gods uh, for for guitar playing, which is I, I'm a huge fan of Gear Gods. I don't know I don't know if you know it's it's a it's a YouTube channel for gear nerds. <laughs> so and we got on charts. Uh, you know I, the guys from Nugablast said, oh, well, guys, you're on charts in Switzerland. You're number two in, in the U.S. I said, what? You know, I still can't believe it. You know, it it's kind of uh, uh, different, di- difficult to keep those numbers because the uh, CD, the, the record cycle is like now it's like a month or a couple oh, of months. Know, so it's, it's a week now almost. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, but still, it was very well, well, well received, and um, uh, we couldn't believe what, what was happening. So hopefully for, it was going to be something that can help us to, to secure another deal, better deal, even better for the next. Who knows? <laughs> to kind of circle back to the, to the Gear Gods interview, because I was actually looking at that before the interview, and it, really, really cool. I love Gear Gods. And... Uh, you did a little bit of like a a dissection. I know you did multi-dimensional hollow as a guitar playthrough. And during the writing process, you said you were listening to a lot of sci-fi soundtracks, which really comes out in the song itself. Mm-hmm. I just out of curiosity, what like what were you listening to that that kind of in, influenced your writing style for this particular song, but then any of the the songs for this album? Yeah, uh, very easy. Hans Zimmer is, nice. yeah, that was, yeah. I mean, Inception. I, I don't remember. I, I love sci-fi me- uh, movies. So, and I always, always, Blade Runner, uh, uh, Blade Runner uh, 2049. I was watching so many movies. And uh, even, you know, not the specific, uh, you know, great ones like i remember this movie was called passengers um oh we were aware of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah i like it movie. but it's not like it's not like um uh, uh, oscar uh, whatever <laughs> so but sure, you know sure. i remember those that that one had a really nice um uh soundtrack i i'm not sure it's from Anne zimmer i'm sure it's not but uh it was a nicer one so basically Anne zimmer was one of my biggest influence in in the in this process yeah multi-dimensional hollow is one of the spacey tracks <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> even daybreakers that's yeah, uh yeah, that has that some vibe. spacey things uh in a different way in a, it's a different flavor but um yeah we want always wanted to experiment with um you know synthesizers and do different things um you know create different flavors within the songs and it was very very difficult uh in the past years because we never had the proper pre-production for the album which we had this time uh so basically what happened was you had a riff you go to rehearsal and say okay this is the riff let's do a song so and you know the real space it's it's a mess so <laughs> You do. It's it's very difficult to come up with um, you know specific things you have in mind. Uh, when you do pre-production, you have everything in on your computer, so you can say, okay, this part we can do this, we can do that. You can you. Know, it's more controlled space and um, environment, so you can you can come up with new ideas. And this was the case because we worked with uh, the Divergent Studio in Italy here. It's a, very, uh, it's a friend of ours. And it was like, guys, you, you can do whatever you want. And he helped us with production, you know, ideas. And, uh, Those are the best words to hear in, a, in, in oh, the yeah. booth. Do whatever you want. 
Yeah, yeah. And this is the thing we never had the chance to do. Uh, so I, I want to say the the other albums are way more easy um, uh, from arrangement uh, arrangement uh, point of view. This was more uh, you know uh, difficult to make, but uh, and the other one, the new one, is going to be like a continuation of this because we want to do even more you know different things and experiment uh, more. Right on. Yeah, keep keep it up. This. This new album, which we, we don't want to take away from from how awesome this new album is. Very excited to hear a continuation of of the Beneath the Crown. But yeah, I mean, congratulations on getting this out and for how phenomenal it is. Because we were talking off podcast before, just like there was a time when guitar solos and like clean vocals and stuff were like a big no no in the i guess if we're gonna put a label on like the death metal era other than melodic death metal and i don't know i i'm a fan of of both those elements i know todd is too i mean the shreddier the better for (laughs) for this type of stuff so yeah kudos i mean the musicianship the the production between this album and the last one and the one before that i mean production video wise sonically like it's just you guys are are getting the type of sound that that needs to be for for reality gray so thank you thank you thank you so much you know uh, this kind of words uh makes uh the band very very happy because if people appreciate what, what we do it's something very rewarding for the musician because that means that speaks to to other people and this is why we we play and we put music out. And, you know, it's uh, it's very it's very difficult, very hard to uh, produce an album. It's you know um, sacrifices has, are being made. Uh, it's you know time. It's time consuming. It's some some people you know that the, the the more juvenile people they they don't know because everything is free. And uh, they they don't it's not it's not like they do on purpose, but they they don't think about it. That uh, behind the music, there's uh, a lot of uh, sacrifices, and it, it's fine. I mean, the the, um, the the music industry it is what it is now. But uh, when we hear this kind of appreciation uh, for us, it's uh, very 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 uh, important. So thank you guys. <laughs> oh, you're most That's welcome. Okay. Yeah, we thank you. We're, we've been jamming. Uh, ever since you agreed to this and uh even more so this morning just to get it back in our heads and uh we were just kind of going song by song and uh, i really liked um dreaming with the added female vocals uh which was awesome uh that was a nice touch so yeah kudos to y'all for doing that uh, it was unexpected but it was, it was really nice payoff uh and i was like even telling ari there's a lot of songs uh it seems like there's this build up to a crescendo and then uh, we get these beautiful solos, and I, I just think you guys pull that off so well. And the transitions to get there, it's like I said, a, an amazing payoff for each song. Thank you. You know, the funny thing is that Dreaming uh, was one of the songs that, was, that is always mentioned in like one of the best songs. And that song, we were not sure to put it on the album because it's so different. Mm-hmm. It's we were like, um, are we sure we're doing this? I mean, <laughs> we like the song, of course, but you know, uh, I was not very sure about because I did that song. Um, I wanted to have like a female vocals and you know the, the contrast contrast with uh, Tommy vocals, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the part in in, in the verse is very quiet and spacey and something totally different from uh, other things we did in the past or that is in the album. So we were unsure to put it on the album, but you never know. I mean, this, this, is, a, this is a thing. This is a classic. When you think something is good or something is not good, uh, you're going to be surprised by the people. That is, they're going to have a completely different point of view. They say, okay, this is maybe is the, the weakest song for people this that's the best song you have. I mean, it happens so many times. <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad you guys 
uh, like that song because it was like um, um, at a risk, I want to say, but oh, uh, it the paid risk off. was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank what's you. your what's your favorite song off the album? I, I know it's hard to kind of pick because they're all kind of like like your children in a sense. But if you had to pick one that either the the process that you really liked or just the end result, w- which one would that be for you? I would say um, personally, Daybreakers, because um, because that was the song that um, we first did uh this uh, spacey vocal lines uh clean vocals which i did i'm not a singer i mean by any stretch of imagination so that was like uh, another risk because i never took any kind of uh, uh singing you know lessons or something i don't know you know when you hear your voice uh it, it's kind of it's weird it's different and maybe you don't like it but uh, that was something I wanted to do from so long. And that was the first song we recorded, actually, oh, wow. for the album. Oh. So that, that is very, very uh, important for me. And when I, I, you know, for the demo, when I, um, you know, showed the demo to my, my girlfriend or my uh, friends, they were like, wow, this is super. Who's this singing? <laughs> and that's me. Oh, yeah. cool. Uh, that, we were wondering no, who was doing the singing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were like, okay, you're joking. You, you don't, this is not you, you know. It was kind of, kind of funny. So they were very, very impressed. Uh, so I decided to um, go further and do uh, other vocal lines, uh, you know, sparse in, 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 the, in the record. But I would say that is one of the, the songs that I'm attached uh, you know, sentimentally, <laughs> so to speak. As you should, that, that song's a ripper, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any other, other questions, Todd? I, I, I do want to touch upon your your guitars in a second, but I want to want to see, Todd, if you had anything else. Honestly, yeah, I, I'd love to, to hear about the gear now, uh, just because, uh, you know, I see two guitars behind you there on the wall uh you know what oh yeah <laughs> yeah just hanging out yeah they're hanging for it's too much <laughs> <laughs> we we were talking off podcast a little bit but uh you're you're endorsed by by jackson correct yeah and what is it did, did you ever imagine yourself being like endorsed by jackson i mean that's such like especially like growing up with like 80s metal that was such a big brand back then i i mean it still is it's still a huge brand and okay. just like the randy Rhodes cut is such an iconic looking guitar and uh, personally one of my favorites like i was watching all your uh music videos from from the new album and i was like damn it just looks so metal like that that's <laughs> like I, I almost bought one because i was like damn i haven't bought a guitar in a long time so can you can you kind of take us through that what it's like to or or even how you got with jackson in the first place sure. well yeah i'm i'm a huge jackson fan since since i started i mean um uh, as i said before i started to listen to metal it was megadeth the first thing i it was kind of down to extinction when i said let me let me see these guys and it was like marty friedman big mustang they both have jackson so wow this is a cool guitar I mean, this is very cool. And then, you know, Slayer, had, uh, Jeff Hanneman had the Jackson SO1, you know, everybody, uh, Kirk Hammond still uh, as, as Randy Rhodes. So, you know, I got a touch with, I mean, Jackson is, it's a metal guitar. And then, 100%. Uh, Children of Bodom happened. So, Alexi Leo is my uh, hero. I mean, and I tell you why, because uh, we had, we had, because he passed away, the same age. We had the same age. So I remember in 97, one of my friends came up with this um, metal magazine. It was Alexi Leo in the, in the, on the cover, said, hey, we need to, you need to listen to this guy. This is like Ingi, Ingi Malmsteen, and uh, it's, it's like black metal. So I listened and said, 
oh, this is so, uh, so this is like, it's 17 years old. So like you, I said, no, this is can't be. Right? <laughs> this, this, this is, uh, I mean, I, I started to play guitar the, the year after. I started at 18. So they were like already like superstars and I started to, but he was, I mean, you, you can't see, but in here I have a poster of Alexi Leo right here. <laughs> so oh, it's, uh, and he used the Jackson before ESP. So I was one on a Jackson guitar. So I, I bought my first SO1 and then in, two, in 2001 and 2004, just for uh, when we got the reality gray going on, I got my first Randy Rhodes and uh, oh, the yeah. R1, which I still have. I, I did so many concerts. And uh, what happened with Jackson? I mean, I always tried to um, approach them uh, with reality gray in, in the past, but uh, of course, there was no, um, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> reason for them to to be like interested. Uh, you know, they got in touch, said, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, but you need to be on TV. I remember this thing. You need to be <laughs> on TV, which is total bullshit. But anyway, yeah. I don't remember which year it was, like maybe 2007 or something. Uh, then in uh, 2018, I went to NAM for the first time in my life. So I was uh, kind of, uh, this is a very long story. I don't know if you guys have time, but uh, I was like at the Jackson booth like maybe 10 hours a day, try to speak with somebody. Of course, there were like a million people. They were, um, uh, everybody was busy, you know, showing guitars. Or whatever. I didn't know even, you know, what, what I'm supposed to talk, who is the A&R guy? I don't know. <laughs> so I tried to, uh, I went to somebody who was at the desk, an information desk, and said, uh, you look, I'm a musician. I want to talk with the A&R guy. Is that, is that possible? And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah. His, his name is Mike. Uh, look for Mike. I mean, look for Mike. Okay. <laughs> How can I look for Mike? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I find this Mike, and he was, like, super busy with this, uh, with this, uh, this um, very young guy. He was a monster on guitar because it's like an uh, Instagram personality or something. He was like a monster. And it was like constantly with him. I said, oh, can I talk to you for a minute? Look, I'm with this guy. I can't. I said, okay. Well, it, long story short, for like uh, from Tuesday, like from Thursday up until till, um, uh, Sunday, I was not able to talk with anybody. At Jackson, the, the last year, the last day at NAMM, there's nobody there. It's very quiet. I was like walking out the NAMM, you know, all sad. And I didn't speak with anybody at Jackson. So, look, I, I just stopped on the door and said, look, one last time. I went, you know, again to the, the Jackson booth. And I found that the first guy I see with Fender here, his name is Rob. I mean, <laughs> he's one of my best friends now. That look, I want to talk with Mike. Is that possible? I said, no, Mike is not here today because this is the day off for him. I said, no way. Said, Tell me, well, what's, uh, what's on your mind? So I explained to him, look, I don't want any guitar. I'm a huge Jackson fan. I use Jackson guitar. I have this band. So, you know, I said, um, if I can, you know, be your artist or collaborate with the brand in any way, I would be super happy. I said, oh, look, uh, this is my email. Send me an email with all your bands, your, and I forward to Mike. I said, okay, well, you're never going to do that, <laughs> of course, just, you know, to be, to be nice. But after, after like a week, I got a, an email from Fender UK. So I said, look, we got this email from Mike, and what's, what's your plan? I said, okay, yeah, you're good. Uh, do you want a guitar? I said, what? <laughs> so that was, you know. That was a dream for me. Dream. That's awesome. Came through like that, but you're persistent. Uh, That's a good thing. Well, you know, when you come from Italy all the way to Los Angeles, <laughs> you want to do things. <laughs> Not a small trip by any means. No, and I was my first name. I was all alone. You know, totally alone. I didn't know what to do uh, because I don't know if you guys have been to Nam. Uh, but it's like mm -hmm. super crowded. I mean, 
there's no way you can talk with anybody if you don't stay there for like three hours and try to squeeze between the other super famous guys from, you know, to squeeze between Jerry Cantrell and whatever, (laughs) Andres Kisser. I'm not joking. I mean, Oh yeah. I can bet. Yeah. So basically that was very easy. Actually. Um, they just wanted to see, uh, if, um, you're uh, actually uh, attached to the brand and you don't want free gear like they say, right? Because people do just, ah, oh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. And then a year after they go with another brand. I mean, they, they don't want to see that when you're a small artist like that, because I'm not like Muddy Friedman or famous like, like that, but, um, not yet. Yeah, that was that was a huge huge thing for me uh, because, as I said, my it was my 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 dream since I was you know dreaming to be like Alexi Lay or, or something. <laughs> so I, I I love the ESPs as well, but uh, I mean, it's it's a different guitar. It's slightly different. I think you made the right right decision. I'm right there with you, man. Like the the whole reason why. I like that type of guitar it, it specifically ESPs is because of Alexi Leho. So I think that's super fucking cool. And you're, you're shredding. I mean, you're Alexi is a phenomenal guitarist, but give yourself some credit. So are you Anto. So that's, Oh, thank you. <laughs> that'll Thanks. be, that, that'll be uh you know, so we'll, we'll hear like down the road, a kid getting into, to like reality gray and be like, I got this guitar because, uh, because Anto was playing it. And you just, you just never know. Like, like you said, you, you spent all that time just, and to Todd's point, like just being persistent. And I mean, you're a fan of, of music and of the gear. So that just kind of, kind of falls into place. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And well, we're working out. We're very working out towards that. I mean, when I, when I saw Alexi Leo, I said, look, I is, is like me. I mean, same age. If he can do it, at least I can try to do better. If he can do that kind of things and be so successful, I, I don't, I'm not saying that I, I'm like near as genius as he is, but I, at least I can try to be better on guitar. So uh, this oh, is yeah, a thing something that, to strive for, for sure. <laughs> we try to be as humble as possible. We always tried and uh, to do things uh, because we, we played seven years together and the three fifth of the band has always been the same. So we basically, uh, you know, we, we grew together and we're a bunch of friends and, uh, you know, always try to, to, to do, we want always to be, you know, better ourselves. To be better and uh, try to be humble. That's it. <laughs> That's a good quality to have. Um, yeah. You know, I, I really can't think of anything else to ask you, but, you know, uh, for any fans out there, uh, we're sort of rolling out the red carpet for you. H- how do people get in touch uh, with the band? How do they interact and uh, how do they keep up with the band? Uh, to, well, to it's easy. Let them out? Easy. We're on Facebook and Instagram. And um, just get in touch. Uh, we respond to every message, uh, even YouTube. Go watch the YouTube videos. We got a lot of attention for the Preachers of the video. And uh, we got a lot of uh, comments. And uh, because the video is very, very, uh, very social oriented. Uh, mm-hmm. So we got a lot of, uh, especially from this, uh, South America, and uh, we try to respond to answer the every every com- comments, and so we're pretty pretty social. So <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> oh, you heard it here, guys. Uh, definitely keep up with the band Reality Gray again. This is Anto, the guitarist. Uh, such a pleasure having you. Seriously, yeah. thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. It was it was a pleasure for me. 